In the late spring of 1794, the headquarters of French General Jean-Baptiste Jourdan were crowded. A project aimed at creating a flying apparatus was put on the agenda. The general reacted skeptically, saying that he needed more battalions, not balloons. However, he still agreed to have a furnace built for the production of hydrogen. On June 2, Captain Jean-Marie Joseph Coutel, accompanied by the Adjutant General, set out from the city of Maubeuge to conduct the first ever military aerial reconnaissance using a balloon. The Austrian gunners who were shelling the city were initially awestruck by the Devil device, but quickly recovered and immediately raised their weapons to open fire on it. Not a single projectile hit the target, and the balloon soon disappeared from the combat zone. Thus, the first aerial reconnaissance and first use of weapons against an aerial target had taken place. Over the next 200 years, anti-aircraft guns traveled a long evolutionary path from a steel cannon to a high-precision homing missile. The biggest leap forward came after World War II. But why? Let's find out. The first obvious factor is the Cold War. At the time, future conflicts were predicted to revolve around jet aircraft and missiles, which subsequently led to the development of many interesting things. The S-75 Divina was one such development. It was a legendary anti-aircraft system that was used in nearly every armed conflict right up until the 90s. It was developed to counter the Boeing B-47, which was capable of reaching most of the USSR's strategic facilities. The first successful use of S-75 missiles took place on October 7, 1959. On that day, a Taiwanese Martin RB-57D Canberra reconnaissance aircraft was shot down over China. The Chinese government said the enemy unit had been destroyed by fighter jets to keep the system a secret. But the S-75 truly became famous on May 1, 1960, when the Russians shot down a Lockheed U-2 reconnaissance aircraft piloted by Francis Gary Powers. The pilot survived and was paraded around the USSR as proof of the superiority of communism over capitalism. Powers was later released in exchange for captured Soviet spies. The complex saw most of its action during the Vietnam War. 95 air defense systems and 7,568 missiles were delivered to the Reds. By the end of the war in 1973, 6,806 missiles had been launched. There were 39 combat-ready complexes left. According to American data, by December of 1965, eight S-75M weapons had been destroyed, although aircraft sometimes bombed false positions equipped with rocket traps made of bamboo. Soviet and Vietnamese sources claimed that 31 aircraft had been destroyed. The Americans acknowledged the loss of 13. According to Soviet records, an anti-aircraft missile unit would destroy five to six American aircraft before being taken out of action. The last successful combat use of the S-75 took place during the Abkhaz War on March 19, 1993, when Georgian missiles shot down a Russian Su-27 fighter near Gudauta. Rockets are all well and good, but let's move on to some exciting anti-aircraft guns. Self-propelled anti-aircraft installations were invented in the early 20th century, but they reached their zenith after the advent of semiconductors. They became the basis of the fire control system, turning SPADs into a formidable force in the post-war world. One of the best examples is the Gepard. This combat vehicle was intermittently developed over a 10-year period beginning in 1965. A number of prototypes were built, but none of them met the military's requirements. Ultimately, lead development company Kras Mafe Wegman manufactured and tested two prototypes on a modified Leopard 1 battle tank chassis with turrets from two different companies, of which one was chosen. The results turned out great. Mounted on each side of the turret is a 35mm Urlikan Burle KDAL R04-3590 cannon with a 550 round per minute rate of fire. Its ammunition consists of 310 unitary cartridges, including 20 armor-piercing subcaliber projectiles for hitting heavily armored ground targets. The guns have a double belt feed mechanism that allows for firing various types of projectiles. The cannon's drive is completely electric, but it does have a manual aiming mechanism as a backup. It has an overall rate of fire of 1,100 rounds per minute, ensuring the destruction of airborne targets flying at speeds up to 1,400 feet per second at a slant range of 330 feet to 2.5 miles and an altitude of up to 1.8 miles. Its high explosive fragmentation incendiary projectile weighs 1.2 pounds, while its normal ammunition weighs over 2. Spent cartridges are ejected automatically. It sounds great and looks really cool. This anti-aircraft gun's effective range was approximately double that of the Vulcan, and its advanced fire control tools made it possible to confidently hit high-speed, low-flying targets, including in limited visibility. In order to catch up with its ally, the United States launched a program called DVAD to create its own anti-aircraft gun. 
The most successful weapon of this type is the Type 87. The Type 87 SPOG was produced by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries for the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force. Full-scale development began in 1982, with the first prototype being released in 1983. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries provided the chassis, while Japan Steelworks supplied the vehicle's cannon system. The Type 87 is equipped with a fully stabilized twin 35mm Erlikan Kontrevs KDA gun. These German guns were manufactured under license in Japan. Each gun has a rate of fire of 550 rounds per minute and can fire armor-piercing or incendiary rounds. The type can engage aerial targets up to 2.5 miles away and hit moving targets with high precision. The vehicle has three periscopes installed in front of the driver's hatch cover. It is also equipped with surveillance and tracking radars and a friend foe identification system. The anti-aircraft gun is equipped with a modern fire control system. Basically, this machine took all the best parts of the Kepard to become one of the most successful weapons in history. There's just one catch. The Type 87 has never seen combat, but we're going to let that little detail slide. The absolute apex of anti-aircraft weapons is the implementation of artificial intelligence and computer technology. For me, the best embodiment of these advancements can be found in the Stinger. The FIM-92 Stinger entered service during the Cold War and became legendary. Suffice it to say that even 40 years later, the Stinger remains the only man pads in service with the U.S. Army. The Stinger received its baptism of fire in the Falklands War between Great Britain and Argentina in 1982. It also appeared on the front pages of newspapers during the Afghan War when the United States began supplying the man pads to the Mujahideen in the mid-80s. The weapon's effectiveness in Afghanistan remains a matter of debate to this day. Reports mention anywhere from a few dozen to more than 200 downed aircraft half of the Soviet's army total during the Afghan war. In any case, the Stingers had obviously become a serious problem for the Soviet Air Force. The FIM-92 is one of the most popular man pads in the world with about 70,000 missiles produced for them. To improve their accuracy, the ammunition uses a two-channel seeker, one for infrared and one for ultraviolet. Back in the 80s, when the technology was much less developed, this system made it possible to shoot down targets despite heat traps. The seeker also has protection against interference. The improved Stinger RMP missiles work even better. They have a processor that allows programs to adjust the missile's trajectory to the target depending on what kind of target it is. If you know what kind of aircraft the enemy is using, no country's fleet is a secret, it becomes even easier to shoot down the planes or helicopters. The latest version of the ammunition can even shoot down cruise missiles. A dual-mode solid propellant engine accelerates the Stinger rockets to a record 2,500 feet per second. The only comparable weapon is the Piorun. The Piorun entered service with the Polish military in 2019. The weapon is an upgrade of the older Grom missile system, which was a localized version of the Soviet Igla man pads. However, the Poles wanted to rid themselves of the Soviet legacy and launched their own program. In fact, the Grom was the same as Igla, but produced in Poland and with some substituted parts, some made in the former USSR and some made locally. We'll tell you more about the history of this weapon in another video. That is, as long as you remind us in the comments below this one. Global aviation post-World War II has led to the development of a variety of anti-aircraft weapons. It has always kept pace with progress and the political environment. The most important factor in the evolution of anti-aircraft weapons was the Cold War. All civilian technologies in the West at that time were converted into military ones. For the Eastern Bloc countries, it was the other way around. All engineering efforts were directed towards the military-industrial complex and only then to the needs of society. Transistors, semiconductors, and their subsequent upgrades up to mini-computers, in the case of the latest Stingers, have become a critically important factor in global development, in particular for air defenses. This fact confirms the notion that military and civilian technologies depend on each other. Even in the 21st century, the arms race has not lost its relevance. Neither has your support for our work by liking and commenting on our videos. We read and try to respond to the ones with the most likes. For now, we must say goodbye, but we'll see you next time right here on our channel.